And welcome to On the Money with Secure Money. My name is Cynthia DeFazio, and I'm joined today by Brian Kowanta. He is founder and president of Secure Money Advisors. Brian, how are you today? I'm great, Cynthia. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. It's always a pleasure to see you, and Good I'm just so you. excited to hear about everything that's going on with yes. you and with the <laughs> office. So let's talk about yeah. that. How busy have you been? Very, very busy. Very busy. We always are. You know, yeah. I would think between a TV show, a radio show, the educational events, um, clients talking about us to friends, family members, co-workers. Uh, we're a very busy office. Um, and you know, I wouldn't be able to do it without a great team. Um, you know, that's one thing that I really appreciate about what Secure Money Advisors has become is the culture that exists there uh, and, of course, the, the fantastic team that we have. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's good when you have a, a really great team because they make me look really good. <laughs> well, let's talk about your team because it keeps yeah. growing. So it how does. many people do you have now? I believe we've got about 12 to 15 right now. So wow. yeah, 12 to 15 people right now. And it does, it takes a small village to uh, provide the financial planning that we do. And of course, also the servicing that we do every single year. Sure. So, um, and you know, we're very particular of who we choose as a team member um, because you know, there is a certain, um, person, type of person that we want, um, and and we want them to mesh well with the team, and and I know we're doing the right things because people will always tell me, you know, if they've been interviewing multiple advisors, you know, to uh, to help them with their retirement. Um, when they do finally, um, you know, settle on us, I'll say, you know, what made you decide us over the other two firms that you were looking at? And they'll say, well, one, you guys provided us with a plan, uh, but two. Um, there's something about your office. Your team has just been absolutely outstanding. And you know that's important because I think if people are gonna choose a retirement planning firm, um, yes, you want a great advisor, but you, you shouldn't be working with just one person. Okay. Um, and, and the reason is, is because the world is too complicated today. It moves too quickly. Yeah. Um, servicing needs to happen immediately. Um, and I hear a lot from people that are working with just one advisor. They'll say, well, I've called and they don't call me back or I don't see them for reviews. And they just feel, you know, that they met with them one time and they were promised this service and the service was never delivered. And that happens a lot. I oh, hear sure. it because I coach advisors all over the country that will tell me that, you know, because they're kind of a one man show or a one woman show, they have a hard time delivering on the servicing aspect of things. Mm. And so I would always encourage people, you know, when you are interviewing a firm, ask about the team too. Who else is on your team? Yes. What's your servicing model look like? What can we expect over the years as we work with you? It's yeah. a good question to ask. Absolutely, that's a great point mm -hmm. because obviously people want to know that you genuinely care and that you're going to be accessible when they need something. That's absolutely right, So having Correct. a whole team is just peace of mind actually because I can't tell you how many people that I've talked to that have said, you know what, Cynthia, I haven't heard from my current advisor in over a year. Yes. That's scary when you Correct. think about it. Correct, yes, it's 100% scary because you know we're supposed to, you know, there, there's supposed to be a level of service there. Yes. Um, you know, and, and for our clients, it's great because uh, they watch me on TV, so there's education happening every single week because of the TV show. Uh, they listen to me on the radio, which, you know, people can find us on the radio on Saturdays mornings on 94.5 3WS, and they can find us on Sunday mornings on WDVE. So um, we're out there in the, in the community really educating on financial planning. And then of course, you can also go to our events tab and you can you know, find out where we're gonna be. Typically we're at a local university or, or a library and you can come out and we do a lot of educational events and our clients come to those because yeah. remember, it, retirement planning is a lot of stuff. You know, it's just not about investing. Um, you know, we talk about this on the show a lot is the five key areas, the income part, the taxes, the investment, the healthcare planning, the estate planning. That's yeah. a lot of stuff. Oh, sure. Um, and, you know, so when you're, when you're educating people on all these moving parts, you know, and you're taking care of something very specific, let's say they're getting ready to retire, right? Um, well, when, you're, when they're focused on 
maybe how they're going to generate income in retirement and how they're going to reposition their, their investments, maybe they don't really connect the dots on the health care strategy yet, right? Mm -hmm. But now they're coming to the educational events or they're listening to me on TV and I might be talking about a different strategy and, you know, they'll come in for the review and they'll say, i got to talk to you about what you were talking on TV yeah. about a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that so that really helps, you know, the, the our team and, and myself service the clients even better because they get to see me every week. They get yeah. to hear me every week. So, <clears throat> Talk to me a little bit about someone who has come into the office recently that knew that they needed a plan and that they wanted to work with you. What was their situation like? What made them come in? Yeah, well, I mean, I had a I had a recent lady come in that was recently divorced. Mm -hmm. um, she was referred actually by a client of mine, um, and this is the first time that you know in her life she's been more of a homemaker than anything else. And now through the divorce, she's gotten a, a sum of money, and you know she hasn't worked because she's been a homemaker. And you know at this point in her life, she's not really thrilled about having to go back to work. And I showed her that actually we don't have to, you know, and she's of the age where we could start collecting Social Security. So I showed her with, you know, with what took place with the divorce and what and what she is entitled to with Social Security that if she wants to work, she can, but it's her choice, but she doesn't have to. And I showed her how to build a plan. And that was very emotional for her because, um, you know, after those that many years of having to now be on your own and, and, and you know, losing that income from the spouse uh, and having all those years of being a mom and taking care of the house and now all of a sudden being in this position where now she has to do all this, um, that was a real peace of mind for her to have this plan that was laid out for her yeah. um, so that she could go on and still be grandma and, um, you know, and, and, and be the homemaker that she's good at being. And I think that's great because my mom was a homemaker. Yeah, um, mine too. Yeah, and yeah. so um, and and that's an incredible job. It is. Uh, a matter of fact, I'm watching Kate do it right now. Yeah. Um, you know, Kate was an HR director for a company downtown in Pittsburgh, and you know, we did make the choice, you know, with the second baby, um, that um, that we would you know, pull her away from that. Um, and, you know, there's days that I come home and um, I don't know if I would be good at that job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that you would. You know, I, I don't know if I would be good at it. So, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, I, I had read an article, uh, I think it was Money Magazine, that I had saw the article and they were actually um, showing what a stay-at-home mom would actually be worth. Yes, if you I had saw to, that. Did you? I it was did. like it was like hundred and twenty-five thousand yeah. dollars a year yeah. that 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 you would have to pay. So, but anyway, yeah. So so that is an example of somebody coming in yeah. uh, that knows we that they they know they need help. They want our help. Um, but then there's examples of people that come in and you know maybe they've been working with their advisor for 20 years. And um, they say, you know, I think everything's okay. I have some concerns about maybe performance not being there or maybe uh, losing a little bit too much in the market when the market would go down. Um, and, you know, they're really there just to kind of see if there's anything better that they could be doing. And they really don't have any intentions of making a change, if you will. Yeah. Um, but as we bring them through the process and we open their eyes up to other things that they should be thinking about, they then now have something to compare and they're going, wow, I didn't even know all of this existed. I didn't know that this is the way it should be being done. And now when I compare, the, you compare where they are and what they could be doing, a lot of those people will make the decision to wind up hiring us. Mm. And that's challenging because, you know, they're breaking a relationship after 20 years. Yeah. A lot of these people have, you know, personal relationships with their advisors. Maybe, you know, um, they've gotten close to them over the years. So, you know, breaking up is a little bit hard to do. It always yeah. is. Yes. <laughs> you know? song. Actually. It is. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> well, this is the perfect well, time for us, yeah. Brian, to talk about the offer that you have to the viewers at home. It's a very yeah. special offer. So let's dive yeah. into that before we open the phone. Yeah, Cynthia, the right track retirement system was really designed to help people determine whether or not they're on the right track. And folks, I designed it for you because every year for the last 23 years, people would come into my office and they would say, am I on the right track? Am I doing the right things? And I always say, if you weren't on the right track, 
when would you want to know? Mm -hmm. And in the world we live in today, we have technology that can help you determine whether or not you're doing the right things. And what's nice about that is it removes the opinion. You know, you don't have to worry about somebody trying to sell you something. You're purely just looking at the mathematical data to make an informed decision of what to do. And our Right Track Retirement System will help you find out whether or not you're doing the right things in the five key areas that I talk about, income, taxes, investments, healthcare strategy, and estate planning. So for the next 10 callers who call in right now, we are gonna give you a complimentary Right Track Retirement Review. You've gotta do your part though. You've gotta call us today. Call 1-888-382-1298 and schedule your appointment with us today. Mm, Brian, thank you so much. To the viewers at home, the phone number to call is on your screen. That number is 888-382-1298. We know you have a lot of questions for Brian and his team about how to plan your perfect retirement. Brian has the answers for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and take advantage of the opportunity today to know that you're on the right track. Again, the number is 888-382-1298. We're going to take a very short commercial break, but don't go anywhere. I have so much more with Brian when we return. See, everybody can tell you how to invest your money. There's not a lot of people out there and a lot of firms that can teach you how to use your money. Most people also tell you that they're scared. And the reason they're scared is because they're afraid of running out of money. The last thing you want to do is have a really good job and you're into your 60s, retire, and be looking for work again in your late 70s. The average person might say, well, a good portfolio would be a good mix of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. No, 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 no. A good portfolio is all designed around the five key areas, income, taxes, investments, healthcare, and legacy planning. We're not just product pickers here. What we do best here is we build retirement plans. Nine out of 10 people when they walk through the door would ask us, we just wanna know if we're on the right track. And I always say, if you're not on the right track, when would be a good time to know it? Probably now. People you know, can actually see a vision once we start to really build out their plan. This is about you. If you're not getting what you need, and you feel that when you walk out of the advisor's office, it's time to get a second opinion. And you can't get a second opinion from the person that gave you the first opinion. The difference at Secure Money Advisors, as a fiduciary firm, we help you manage the risk, build the income, and give you the retirement you dreamed of. And welcome back to On the Money with Secure Money. My name is Cynthia DeFazio, and I'm joined today by Brian Kowanta. He is founder and president of Secure Money Advisors. Brian, a wonderful show we're having today, mm -hmm. obviously talking about the importance of planning your retirement yeah. and just not diving in without a plan because that can be detrimental to it's so many people. Yeah. So we have some viewer questions to get through, and I definitely want to tackle this one because this is a hot topic right now, mm -hmm. and I just think we should talk about it. it says, Brian, I'm really concerned about inflation can you explain how this can impact me especially entering the retirement years yeah well inflation is really simple it's just the cost of services and goods going up right just yeah. costs us more money to live it's just a fancy way of saying prices are going up yes across the board <laughs> across the board everything everything is going up so um, you know, and you, you hope that um, things like Social Security try to keep pace with it, which, you know, Social Security this year gave a 6.5% cost of living adjustment, which was really nice. Um, but your plan also has to be built around helping keep pace with inflation. So, um, but the way that you can do that is a number of ways. One, we always talk about our bucketing strategy. Um, and the reason why we talk about the buckets, the three buckets, yeah. bank money, pension money, risk money, um, is because risk money is a way of keeping pace with inflation. Mm. But the only way you're gonna keep pace with inflation with risk money is for that money to have a long-term time horizon to grow. And the reason I say that is because if we're in an inflationary environment and you're pulling money out of your stock investments, okay, um, you're actually preventing that portfolio from growing at a rate that's going to help keep it ahead of inflation because you're dragging the return or the performance of the portfolio down by pulling money out of it. Wow. So the proper okay. way of, of doing it, and we're not even talking about market volatility there, we're just talking purely yeah. pulling money out 
and 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 slowing down the growth of that portfolio because money's coming out. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways you combat that is you carve a little bit of money off and you create an income bucket. And that income bucket is what I call a bridge. That bridge is for about 10 to 15 years, maybe longer if we can, 20, um, where we generate cash flow from that bucket, which means that now that risk money can just continue to grow. You don't touch it, it compounds on itself, and now we're gonna keep pace with inflation, mm -hmm. right? So those are the appropriate ways of doing it. Um, keeping expenses down is obviously a way to keep pace with inflation because if you have low operating expenses, and when I say operating expenses, I'm talking, you know, everything that we have to have, you know, a home, um, gasoline, uh, yeah. you know, groceries, yep. uh, you know, electric, all that kind of stuff. If you can keep costs low there, if cost of living goes up, it's very easy to um, to offset that because expenses are low. But if your expenses are already high, yeah. uh, and now you get an inflationary environment, it can be tough, but this is what planning can do for you. Planning sure. can give you the clarity and the peace of mind because when you plan, and I know that's a very general term planning, it's a very broad brush stroke here of, of what we really do, but it's really about going through the math. And we have a really great way of laying this out mm -hmm. to give people that confidence and clarity that I don't care if inflation rate goes to 8%, I know a lot of my clients are gonna be just fine. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I'll know how, and I know how to fix it. That's the other thing, yes. you know, and, and, and it's an easy thing to fix. Um, so we don't really, we're not really concerned about it too much because the models that we build are designed to mitigate inflation, designed to mitigate risk. And, um, and because of that modeling, um, we know we have a high probability of success. Okay, so basically, it's like putting guardrails up on your retirement. Yeah, you it's a good, good, it was a good, good way to put it. Right, it's yeah. it's retirement guardrails. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's exactly right. Well, this is a great question as well, Brian. This is actually coming from Cranberry. It says, I'm curious as to what you think about the 4% retirement rule. Is it still accurate? And if it is, what type of stocks and bonds mix and annuities would be appropriate to use with it, the 4% mm -hmm. rule? Yeah. Well, first, for those that don't know what the 4% rule is, let's identify what it is. So basically, the 4% rule was created in the early 90s by a financial advisor in California. You can look all this up on Google. Um, and basically, Basically what the rule said was that if you had a million dollars, it doesn't matter, I'm just using a million dollars as an example. If you had a million dollars, you could pull out 4% in the first year of retirement. So 4% on a million dollars would be 40,000. Okay. And then each year you can increase the withdrawal by the rate of inflation. So let's say the rate of inflation was 3%. Well, that means the next year's withdrawal would be like 41,000 and change. The next year it'd be 42, 43,000, right? So the income that you would be taking out of your portfolio would go up a little bit each year, okay? okay? Uh, that's the idea behind the 4% rule. They also said that if you had a 60-40 split between stocks and bonds um, and you followed this 4% rule, you should have enough money for the rest of your life. Well, if you look at where, you know, uh, things were when this rule was created in the early 90s the markets were a lot different interest rates were a lot different but yet the four percent rule is still being talked about uh, like a relevant strategy and quite frankly it's outdated it's like a flip phone you know nobody uses yeah. a flip phone anymore that's true that's true <laughs> you know so you don't want to build your retirement with a flip phone is what I'm telling you you don't even want to text with a flip phone you don't even phone. want to text with a flip phone <laughs> it's a nightmare that's right so so the 4% rule, um, it actually has a high probability of failure now. Um, and that's because uh, bonds don't pay as much interest. You have interest rate risk. You have market volatility. Uh, matter of fact, the Wall Street Journal came out and they said that depending on when you retire and what rate of return you get, the 4% rule could have a failure rate of up to 56%. Oh, wow. Think about that. So if someone is building their plan and taking advice from an advisor based off of the 4% rule, um, there is potentially up to a 56% chance of failure. Could you imagine signing paperwork right now um, and walking out of that advisor's office and right before you're about to back out, the advisor says to you, hey, just want to let you know all that paperwork that you signed today to build your plan and the way that we're going to generate income. I don't know if I told you, but there is a 56% chance our plan's not going to work. Can't even imagine no, that. No, no, no. And now take that even further. Wow. Let's say we're about to get on an airplane. Oh, yeah. And let's say we're about to head to Hawaii on an airplane. And right before we're about to back out of the gates, the captain gets on the intercom and he says, folks, I just got word from the tower that there's a 56% chance that we may crash into the ocean before we get to Hawaii. If anybody would like to get off the plane now, you can get off the plane, <laughs> right. right? And I talk about this at my educational event, and I always say to people, what, what percentage 
of failure, right? What percentage of crashing in the ocean would you be comfortable with? Yeah. And I'll say, would it be okay if it was only 30%? And they'd say, no. What about 25%? No. What would it need to be? Everybody tells me it needs to be zero, okay? So the point of that is that we don't want to build our planning model around something that has a failure rate, right? Yeah. There's a different approach today. We call it the bucketing approach. And this is where we use three buckets of money versus the 4% rule to create time and leverage and protection and, and just a a better way of generating cash flow. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Brian. Excellent response to that question. This is a great question as well. It says, Brian, I'm 92 years old, college from Butler, and I want to invest some money with a company that has a bond fund where they buy and sell bonds and you receive a share of the return that they are able to produce. I'm sure there are hundreds of companies that do that, but what has your experience been? Yeah. Well, again, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know what specific investments being talked about there, and I'm actually quite fuzzy on that that investment. But, um, you know, let's just talk about bonds in general. I mean, um, you know, I'm not just not a big fan of utilizing bonds anymore. Um, and I just don't I don't think the risk is worth the reward. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, even a corporate bond right now might only pay, you know, 2.5 to maybe 3%, you still have interest rate risk. Um, so, you know, a lot of times what you can use in place of a bond and what I use in place of a bond for my personal investments, and it's right for me, it might not be right for this person, um, but it is an annuity. I use a fixed annuity um, because I can get a guaranteed rate of return, 3.5%, and on top of it, uh, I've got no interest rate risk, and I know that the interest I'm going to get is going to come in every single day, mm -hmm. um, and I don't have to worry about if, if interest rates go up, I don't have to worry about my portfolio going down because the bond prices were affected. So so to me, it's a little bit more of a stable way to approach it. And some fixed annuities, like the one that I personally own, if interest rates go up, the rate in my account actually goes up. So that's a nice trade-off, you know. And, yeah. and a lot of times when you buy fixed accounts, and an example of a fixed account, I would compare that maybe to a bank CD, whereas if you bought a CD at like maybe... 3% for five years and interest rates went up after you had it for one year, the interest rate doesn't go up. You got to hold on to that 3% rate for five years. Yeah. With these fixed annuities, the rates go up, it goes up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, people just don't know what they don't know. Um, and, and, and product design have become very different. Um, but there's always the traditional approach. And, you know, the traditional approach is great, but there's also great alternatives out there today that have been created by the big uh, retirement companies um, to help with the new environment that we're in. Hmm. Well, Brian, I know there's a very special offer that you're going to present to the viewers at home. Let's talk about what that is before we open the phone lines. Yeah, the Right Track Retirement uh, Review, Cindy, uh, we, we really have spent a lot of time building this out and helping people determine whether or not they're on the right track. So folks, for the next 10 callers who call in right now, we're going to be offering you the Right Track Retirement Review. It's really designed to help you determine whether or not you're on the right track. I always say if you're not on the right track, when would you want to know that? When would be a good time? Truly, the Right Track Retirement Review is designed to give you clarity and confidence about retirement. And if you are on the right track, we'll be more than happy to shake your hands and tell you to keep doing what you're doing. But take advantage of this. It's not very often that you get to come into an office, sit down with a licensed fiduciary and go through your financial plan. So, but you've got to do your part. You've got to call the office today, 1-888-382-1298. Again, 1-888-382-1298. Brian, thank you so much to the viewers at home. The phone number to call is on your screen, and that number is 888-382-1298. We're going to take a very short commercial break, but when we come back, we do have time for one more viewer question. It could be yours. Stay tuned. If I could help you increase your income, if I could help you pay less taxes, if I could help you potentially maximize the returns of your investments while reducing risk, reducing fees, if I could help you prepare for a health event, or more importantly, when the good Lord decides to take you home, to make sure that the money you've accumulated over your lifetime goes to your family and to your charities rather than the IRS, would that be worth the time to come in and get a second opinion? And welcome back to On the Money with Secure Money. My name is Cynthia DeFazio, and I'm joined today by Brian Kowanta. He is founder and president of Secure Money Advisors, better known as Brian Q. Yeah, better known <laughs> as Brian Q because Cynthia has not been able to say my last name for the last... <laughs> 
three years. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. You are though, getting right? better. You are I mean, getting better. Yes. I think yes. so. I think the audience is yes, going, yes, I know, she got I it. Because at one time we had that little, um, we were going to do a charity Yeah, we were going to do a charity. That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. But, you know, I, my grandfather was known as uh, as Frank Q because nobody oh. could say Quaranta. You know, right? it was a, it's, a, it's, it's a real tongue tire for a, a lot of people. So um, yeah. it's it's been butchered all my life. I can remember um, playing football and I can remember making a tackle and somebody saying in the in the booth the tackle just made by number 58 Brian Courtney I mean I don't know even where you get Brian Courtney so anyway but uh, I do get people that ask all the time how do I say your last name I said just it's Brian Q it's a lot easier so. I love that I love that well Brian we yeah. have time for just one more viewer questions and I think this is actually a very good one it said Brian I would like to invest money from my stock portfolio into something else specifically a good ETF either in gold or exponential technologies or possibly health care yeah. I know that not all ETFs are created equal. I wanted to get your opinion. I'm already invested in some traditional stocks and index funds. Yeah. Well, first off, I mean, we should tell the audience what an ETF is, and it's and it's a, in a uh, exchange traded fund, um, which is different than a mutual fund. Um, number one, it has a real share price, meaning if the share price is ten dollars right now, and in an hour it goes to eleven dollars, I can sell that ETF and get that share price immediately. Whereas you compare that to a mutual fund a mutual fund is a little bit more expensive it's got a net asset value price which means that if that share price right now is ten dollars and it goes to eleven dollars and I sell it right now I don't get eleven dollars I have to wait till the end of the day so by the time the end of the day comes that share price could have went from eleven dollars down to four dollars and I would get the four dollar price so it's not as um, as friendly when it comes to trading quickly uh, and getting real-time pricing so and mm -hmm. these ETFs come in all different shapes and sizes there's ones for utilities there's one for technologies there's there's one for gold um, and all kinds of different stuff um, I like them you know we use them in our portfolio okay. um, we like to use a lot of Vanguard uh, ETFs. Uh, they're very, very low cost. Um, and anything that's low cost is a benefit to the client because lesser fees means more more return for them. Um, but, you know, not knowing much about the situation, I wouldn't be able to give very specific advice. But I think it's important for people to understand what an ETF is and yeah. what advantages it has. And, you know, certainly we believe in them because we use them at our office. Mm, yeah. Brian, thank you so much for that excellent response. We only have about a minute and a half left of the show this week. Any final words of wisdom that you'd like to give the viewers at home? Yeah, have a plan. Okay. The most important thing is you can have a plan. Work with a fiduciary advisor. Um, sit down with somebody. Really map out a game plan for yourself. You should have a roadmap of where you are, where you need to go. Um, and make sure you're covering the five key areas of retirement planning. Make sure that when you are addressing things with your advisors, that you're going over your income strategy, you're going over your tax strategy, your investment strategy, your health care, and your, of course, your estate planning. If you're making sure all those five key areas are taken care of, every I is dotted, every T is crossed, you're going to have a really well-designed plan. If you're just working in the investment space and your advisor and you are just talking about performance, probably a good time to get a second opinion. And that's why for the next 10 callers, we are going to offer you the right track retirement review that you're going to be able to come in and help determine whether or not you're on the right track and whether or not you're doing the right things. But you got to do your part. Call us today. Pick up the phone. Don't procrastinate here. This is not the time in life to kick the can down the road. Get yourself a good plan. Get yourself on the right track. 1-888-382-1298. Schedule with us today. Brian, thank you so much to the viewers at home. Thank you for spending time with us today. That number is 888-382-1298. Be safe, be happy, be blessed. And we look forward to seeing you back here one week from today.